Hello there, my name is Tom Monks and I'm going to talk to you about the AIM's brand new quadruple A side or EP for short. This is a cherry picked selection of songs that mean the most to us from our forthcoming double album but we also don't feel like that we've given everything away, we've got so much more in store for you but this brand new EP has four brand new tracks Next patient please, bombs away, I know she knows a final goodbye. I'm going to talk to you about how we made it. Oh, it's been an absolute emotional roller coaster the last few years putting this together. It's been heartbreaking, it's been incredibly fun and I just can't believe these tracks are actually finally out there for you to hear. So let's start with track one, next patient please. So first things first, one thing you should know is that no recording studios were used in the making of this song. It was entirely me, Grant, Sam, and a laptop, and a very special guest who I will get into later on. We didn't even use a mic stand when we recorded this. See, we'll balance it on the chandelier. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. So, Grant wrote this song when he was suffering from the dreaded virus when the news came out about the parties. And in a fit of rage, he wrote this song all in one city. And once he fully recovered, he invited me over to record this song with him, which I thought was a demo at first. And if I'd known it wasn't a demo, I wouldn't have used keyboard drums as a placeholder. I mean, Christ, we have Billy Moody in our band. What are you talking about? So, um, let me play you those isolated <laughs> keyboard drums, which are otherwise totally against my morals. But um, because we were in such a rush to get it out, we kept it on and we actually kind of got away with it in a weird Madame Two Swords Uncanny Valley kind of way. I mean, on your own, you can kind of tell they're <laughs> programmed. Very much on the grid kind of thing, but it adds to the clinicalness of the song. And to add a human quality to this song, we added our own drums with our mouths. We went <laughs> into a microphone. It sounds very funny on its own, but add some hand claps and put it in a mix. It actually sounds quite hard hitting. So that worked really well in our favour. That was a fun little experiment that we did. I was listening to a lot of jellyfish when we did this song and I had to add a jellyfish section, which is right here. You know, think the Beatles meets the disgusting 90s alternative rock riffs, like the really raunchy stuff. That's what we were going for there. And um, at the very end of the song, now here's our special guest. So there is an underappreciated member of the judges household who is Purdy Judges. So she features right at the very end of this song. You know, bless Purdy, she came in from the garden when we were recording the vocals and she was feeling very sociable, even though we were trying to work. And Grant was getting increasingly frustrated. So, but I thought, you know what, keep it. And we did. And that's the story of Next Patient, please. Now on to the next one. And as is tradition, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, the next track on the album is track two which is called Bombs Away. And this is one of the first songs that we recorded for the album, that we began to record, but in recent weeks it's become increasingly relevant. So we had to release it while we could because we felt the message would resonate with a lot of people at the moment. This song started as a Marvin Gaye Motown meets acoustic-ish demo and turned into a Foo Fighters meets a heavenly choir. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> It wasn't what we expected when we met up around that dinner table the first time, it's evolved into a whole different animal. And uh, there's a lot of tracks on this, how many are there? 118 tracks! <laughs> we got really carried away with this, but they all go to good use. Half of them are harmonies, featuring the lovely Peter Sim, who is the guitar player and a harp, the blues harp player in the game, and also his lovely other half, Lee Innes, who when I pressed record, when she was at the microphone, I discovered she had a fantastic voice, like some seriously powerful stuff. So let's hear these harmonies in isolation, seeing as they've taken up the bulk of this project. 118 tracks, bloody hell. Who'd you believe? But it's worth it, listen to them. When they spread their lies. 
it's hard to conceive. Powerful stuff. Peter Sim. Not only a great player, but a great voice as well. It was quite an emotional session recording these harmonies because it was the first time that we really properly saw each other after we lost Jamie. And there were a lot of tears and it was a lot of wine as well. And it was <laughs> extremely therapeutic for all of us, really. And this one finally has Billy Moody on it. What an incredible drummer he is. Let me find some of his drum parts. Um, tracker 72, 73, um, 89 onwards. So let's hear a bit of isolated Billy Moody. He's only 21, 22, but he plays like a seasoned professional. I mean, <laughs> like he's got a serious ear and a, he hits and he listens and he's just amazing. He gets the accents. So yeah, that's Billy Moody, what a force of nature he is. We're very, very lucky to have him. And on the album, you can hear a lot more of him. And now I guess the next thing I have to say about the memories of recording this song is the sound effects. I mean, you know, a lot of producers like to use what's what they call stock sound effects. They pick from a library, but we like to make ours from scratch because we couldn't find any good sirens. So it launches into the beginning of the song. It's gonna come in any second. Oh, well, there it is. You hear these sirens. Do you know how we made those? Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> We're always innovating here in the AIM. But well, we try to.